Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to this very first episode of It's All Relative with me, your host, Rizwan Karim. And I'd like to first thank you for taking the time to tune in today and watching our very first episode. I hope you will continue to do so as we have some very exciting content lined up for you in the weeks to come. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting subject. Uh, this is something that has a lot of opinions, a lot of questions, but maybe not too many answers. And that is the subject of social media. Um, today, a lot of us are active participants on across all three or four platforms. And uh, a lot of the questions that come up in our lives, uh, what to post, what not to post, um, are we giving away too much of our lives? Um, what are the pitfalls and benefits that could come with it? Um, so hopefully we will try and get some answers for you today. I'm extremely honored and happy uh, to have with us today uh, Sheikh Jafar Hussein Jafar, who is the resident scholar of the Masumin Islamic Center. So with him today, we hope to try and at least get some of these answers, if not all of them. And uh, Sheikh, thank you so much for being with us Welcome. today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. So let's, um, to warm things up, uh, you know, we've all heard the phrase that says social media can make you or break you. Uh, you know, we've all heard that. Um, so maybe to start off, tell us a little bit about the benefits or maybe even the, the challenges of being active on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever it is. Uh, maybe we can start off start off there. Yeah, sure. First of all, um, thank you for having me on. Um, I pray and wish the best for you, inshallah, and in what your Asan, endeavors thank you. are. I think it, it doesn't take a religious scholar to talk about the pluses and minuses of, of social media. I think we can all um, relate to certain benefits and are aware of the harms associated with both, right? I think for the, as far as the pluses... Um, you know, we've connected with so many people that we may never have connected with before. Friends, um, yeah. classmates that we may have had when we were children. I think especially for our parents' generations, you know, the, they left their, their friends and family maybe 30, 40 years ago and don't have that type of relationship with 100%. them. Um, they're now being able to connect and... and, uh, and uh, share with each other what they've been up to and all of these things. And I think we can go through all of the positives as well as far as being aware. Um, sometimes I may get the most up-to-date information on news on social media feeds yep. um, where yep. there might be not as much bias as if I were to watch CNN or sure. Fox News or things like that. Um, so the pluses are, are definitely there. Um, but I think at the same time, it's the mind the negatives have we have to be aware of them right um, I think it's created a world of desensitization so because I'm exposed to certain things over and over and over again whether it could be um, inappropriate things as far as the opposite gender and how they appear on my feeds um, whether it could be people backbiting people um, bashing each other constantly it's, it's created this level of desensitization where I feel like, hey, I got to be a part of this, right? <laughs> yeah. um, if I'm not a part of it, it's almost like I'm not with it now, you know? And if you're not with it, you kind of, there's definitely a feeling of loneliness and isolation. That's why people Great. get certain type of hair designs. People get certain type of clothes because they want to be in with what's happening. Um, so I think that that's a negative. There's a certain amount of peer pressure. Um, and, you know, sometimes yeah. we, we tell our children about peer pressure and what they feel at school. Uh, but really, the, there could be like tremendous amount of peer pressure when it comes from social media that I got to fit in. Um, oh, my friend liked this. Now I got to like it. Right? <laughs> Otherwise, they'd be like, oh, well, how come you're not liking it? Right. True. Um, True. So I think that's from one perspective. Uh, we see that. I think another perspective as well is it's it's made us all um, mujtahids in a way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. Um, Everybody has an opinion on everything now, and it's, it was never the case like that before. Uh, before, I used to speak when I knew something, and when I didn't know something or it didn't involve me, I didn't speak. Right. Um, and, and, but today, you find that everybody has an opinion on something, whether or not they forget being experts, whether or not they have anything to do with it. Right. right. So, I mean, I, we, we give this example, like if there's a doctor, you and your doctor are talking, and your doctor's giving you advice... 
I'm not going to butt in and tell the doctor, no, no, you're wrong. But you find, for example, from what I'm related to, as far as the religious, religious area is concerned, there may be a religious question. And if, if someone gives a reply and let that person be a scholar, for example, you find many non-scholars will, will jump in and give their right. opinions and they give um, kind of contradictory information. And I think sometimes people are just left confused, you know, like what should we do? Um, who should we believe? It's created um, an atmosphere of, of uncertainty in people. So I think we can go back and forth with the pluses and minuses. At the end of the day, you know, if we use it for the pluses, for that which I can benefit from, and if I can, uh, to the best of my ability, not fall prey to the negatives of it, then from a religious perspective, you know, there's nothing haram about right. it. As long as I can maintain uh, my sanctity and my dignity and modesty um, and not corrupt myself and corrupt others. Because there's this responsibility with the other side as Correct. well. You know yes. what I mean? I think sometimes like, people will be like, well, I'm not doing it. Um, yeah. but, but, you know, they're not realizing the connection and the web that exists within each one of us, that Correct. if I move a certain piece and that makes another piece move somewhere else, I'm kind of responsible for that entire movement of that piece. That's, that's actually very interesting. We're going to come to that. But I'm happy that we started here because there's a lot of people, uh, maybe even parents, who have kids growing up really fast nowadays and they're going to be a part of this, uh, this, uh, this web of you know, social media. So I'm glad we started there. There's a lot of good information there on on how to approach these things. But the very next question that would come up naturally is, okay, now I'm on it. Right. I, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on Facebook or Twitter, whatever it is. Now, before we start sharing our lives right. or our opinions, what should we be careful of? You know, would you say that there's things we should be, uh, with the precautions we should take? Uh, because I know there's a temptation of, you know, sharing as much as we can and, you know, um, I guess for lack of a better phrase, to, to show that I'm living a good life, right. for example. Right? One of, the, one of the ideologies, that is. So what do you think would be some of these precautions or things that we should be careful of before we embark on this journey of being active on, mm. on social media? Right. Uh, you know, I think it depends on what you're trying to get out of social media. Okay. Um, for example, like me, I, I'm more interested in knowing what's happening in the world I'm right. um, getting different opinions of how to um, to help the the lives of people from the from the akhlaqi perspective and how I can gain benefit too. It's not just something that I can give, but what I can right. get back. I don't understand, you know, where this uh, this desire and maybe it's past my generation, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's possible. Uh, uh, yeah, it's possible, yeah, right? It's yeah. totally possible of wanting everyone to know everything about what we're me. doing. Yes. Yeah, I mean. I don't see any, any value. yeah value or any like <laughs> it doesn't uh, any, any taste to that you know I'm not right. using the right word but but that is where we live people want to tell us about everything that they're doing right like uh, from what they had to eat and what clothes they wore and and where they're traveling to and all right, of these things right. and you know from the just most logical concerns that I have about that like if for example you post a picture that I'm traveling. I know your house is free. You know, I just don't get it. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I just don't get it, you know? Like, for example, right. you know, like, from a really like, basic perspective, I live, like, in a condo apartment type of building. If I'm traveling with my entire family, I'm going to load my luggage late at night in my car because I don't want the whole building knowing that I'm right. leaving. Right, right. But we're, we're so yes. willing to post these things, right? So, but that's one perspective. I think yes. from another perspective, um, we need to make sure that whatever we post, um, what's the intention behind my posting? Right. Right. Um, would God be pleased with what I'm posting? Um, am I doing this um, to get closer to God? And I don't think people think about all that. You know what I mean? They're, they get this um, immediate high from what they're doing and they feel like the entire world wants to know what they're doing. Would you think it's you a know? sense of, of validation then when you see all those likes and followers Absolutely, coming through? Absolutely, right? Like, I mean, but that's the, that's the sad part about it where my existence is validated by the number of likes that I have. Right. My existence is validated by the number of people who are following me, for example, right? Right. Um, when it has nothing to do with my actual action itself. And therefore, right. what, what that begins to happen now is that I begin to do actions to, to please 
that aspect of it. Fair right? enough. So rather yeah. than doing actions because they're needed, right. rather than doing actions because um, uh, they're my normal day-to-day -day functions, I'm going to be doing things now on purpose just to continue that validation mm. process. Um, that exists point. and and it, it begins to get very murky like where do we stop with that you know i think common things from an islamic perspective you got to really ask yourself right like is a god happy with this right you know you see in bumper stickers sometimes i know we used to see it in the states uh wwjd what would jesus do you know you have this in a lot of like <laughs> yes. the the bible belt states you see these bumper stickers Correct. i think yeah. for muslims we got to ask ourselves you know like uh, what would the imam think what would the what would Correct. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala think uh, would allah would the imam be pleased with what i am posting right and i think that the the issues can can be branched out in so many different ways um, from one perspective it could be an issue of jealousy right where my actions may create a sense of jealousy in Correct. somebody else yeah. uh, who may not have the same things that I have. But also, depending on my own morality standards, if I am promoting something which is, let's say, haram, forbidden, or if I'm promoting something which is even gray, I may tempt somebody who may never have done that to do something uh -huh. which would lead them to a very negative area. So, for point, example, yeah. you know, like I see... Um, you hanging out, not you, let's just say somebody else, um, somebody I consider to be a good person, but they're hanging out in a mixed gathering, for example. Right. Um, and then I, as a person, may not like to, I mean, may not hang out in this mixed gathering, or let's say my parents tell me you can't go to a mixed gathering, but then I tell them, look, Rizwan went. Yeah. yeah we, you know Rizwan. Rizwan's a good guy, right? So now I'm beginning to follow a lifestyle um, that may not be recommended or in certain cases may be forbidden because others are doing it. And now it really Correct. puts, for parents too, it puts them in a difficult position, right? Like, how Absolutely. are you going to argue that? Like, right? True. Um, so, I don't know. I think there's a lot of... Uh, things that can come out from this discussion. No, absolutely. So, so now that we know, okay, so we've, we've talked about, you know, the precautions we should take um, based on whatever we put, put out there. But then the next question that would come up in anyone's mind is, what if this is a, a career path that mm -hmm. I wish to take? Um, today, um, and I'm sure everyone in the audience knows this as well, is the most popular um, social media people out there, um, they, they pretty much uh, take us through every aspect of their lives, whether it's uh, preparing breakfast in the morning or you know, doing their daily workout or uh, going to get some groceries or whatever it is. Just every aspect of their lives has been documented and such people um, uh, are, tend to be very successful because let's face it, there might be a part in all of us that enjoys seeing what other people are, are, are up to. So, yeah. so when it comes to us as Muslims, who wish to go down that path, what's your take on that? I mean, yeah. where do you see, what's your opinion you know, on we, that? You know, before we get to that, like, like where, where do you think that comes from, right? Like, I have, a, I have an idea, like, where right. I think it comes from, where this, there's this desire to become, to know everything about each other. Right. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like, where do you think that comes from? I guess just being inquisitive, I suppose. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough one to, to dig deep and see yeah. why I want to know. But I think just are we, could we just be wired that way? That I like to see what someone else is up to. I don't um, know. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure. If, maybe. Maybe we are wired that way. I don't know. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with um, a concentrated effort that has begun within, for example, media circles or... Um, this whole entertainment industry, right. where the whole tabloid industry, where they've always shown us every bit of celebrity's life. Celebrity right. comes out of a gym, celebrity goes here. And like, That's true. I you're exposed, that. you're yeah. exposed to these things as I'm checking out from the, from the grocery aisle. All these magazines are there. And you know, you, it's, it's difficult not to glance. You're like, oh, true. yeah, Brad Pitt did this. Brad, you know <laughs> what I mean? Brad, you know? Yes. Um, and so we've always had this fascination with what these quote-unquote celebrities are doing you know what I mean um, and now there is this effort to make each and every one of us a celebrity right and this there's a desire for that like I want people to know you know I've always right. known what others have known it's and I want people yeah. to know um, and it's just uh, it's just uh, 
it's sad. It's sad, right? Like um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in the, in, uh, he says about uh, fahisha, those who spread indecency um, and those who promote indecency um, will face a terrible punishment. You know, we've been, this, this concept of getting to know each other, getting to right. know what everybody's doing. And obviously a lot of it is spread through indecency, right? Like in the sense that um, the more you reveal about yourself, now it becomes very slippery, right? For, Correct. Um, for me, for example... Um, or for a muhajjaba, a girl who wears hijab, maybe today, okay, I'll wear hijab. And then tomorrow, okay, I've noticed that if I put a little bit of makeup on, I'm going to get more. Um, mm. And if I maybe, you know, have a convertible hijab on, it's going to get more. Um, right. It begins to get a slippery slope for guys too, right? Like, what am I going to do? Like today, um, I did an interview with somebody and then tomorrow I shook their hand and the day after. It just leads to this constant progression of more and more... Um, towards acts which will eventually lead to indecent um, acts, you know. Um, I forgot your question. No, that's okay. That's okay. It's good. It's, this is all great. Yeah. Um, it's all great information. Um, it, but it's then, coming off like I'm being like anti-social media, right? right? But it's right. not the case. I'm on social media. I'm not on all the platforms that you mentioned. Yeah. Because I don't think I have the time for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't have a desire for it. I really don't. But I do feel that if I did get on, I would have a desire for it. I like I, the most social media that I'm on is Facebook, and right. I have to consciously fight myself not to get on, not to scroll, right? right? Because that one beginning of scrolling which I had an intention of doing it for a minute, next right. thing I know, half an hour has passed. Absolutely. Just, just Absolutely. scrolling, right? Yes. So I'm fighting myself in, in not doing that. And I know that if I was exposed to all of these other things, the fight would be even tougher. Right, you know what I mean? right. So, so tell us, what does Islam say about privacy? Right. Um, so we've talked about, you know, why we may be tempted to, to post things online. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's kind of... You know, shift gears a little bit, and and when we look at it as Muslims being active on social media, um, what does Islam tell us about privacy in particular? Um, I'm sure uh, there's lots of, of, of information there um, right. that that the viewers would would find extremely beneficial. Right. So you know, I think when we look at what Islam talks about as far as privacy, we come back to some some principles. Right. So a couple of the principles that that we that we have to come back on is modesty and haya. Haya is not just something that is reserved for women, right? There is a responsibility of chastity and modesty that falls upon men as much as it does upon women. Correct. Um, so we come to this area, for example, there is a prophetic tradition that says the most intellectual of you is the one who is the most modest. It's right. amazing that he, he equates one's aql. أَعَقَلُ nas أَحْيَاءٌ You know, like the, wow. the most intellectual person is the one who's most modest. And it's kind of like amazing where we are in society, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. This where, is huge. Yeah, yeah. where on the, the more we reveal and the more we're open, we think we're, we're smart. We're we think, smarter. Yeah, yeah, we're connecting. But according to Islamic standards, you're not even considered to be an intellectual. You amazing. Know what I mean? Amazing. Um, so if we take this modesty and we take privacy intimacy between a husband and a wife should be between the husband and the wife. It was right. never in Islam um, that, we, that we share these type of things with anybody right. else, right? In fact, you know, like one of the standards um, that we have to, admit, to gauge the truthfulness of prophetic traditions is by the standard of modesty. So, for example, right. there are certain traditions that we find in certain books that says once... Um, one of the wives of the Prophet was sleeping on his lap and then her father came in and she continued to sleep on his lap until the father scolded her to say that how dare you sleep in, on the Prophet's right. lap while I'm here. And this is like a believed tradition, right? But you look at it and you're like, are you kidding me? Right? <laughs> like, yeah. like my wife wouldn't do that. Your wife wouldn't do that. If, you know, yeah. But the Prophet's wife did that, right? right. So we, we, right. We, we reject that tradition simply from the position of modesty, that the Prophet would never allow something like that to happen. That's amazing. Right? I've never heard of that. Um, yeah. And so when we look at our lives and we look at the things that we should be posting, we should not be posting, you have to ask yourself that would this be something that the Prophet would do, for example, or, or just from the position of modesty. Um, is it okay for me to have an intimate pose with my wife and have a picture taken? Right? Right. Um, and the Islamic answer would be no. Right? It would be no, this is not appropriate um, because that intimacy is reserved for your privacy in your private 
house or in your private room. Correct. He was never meant for the world to see those type of things. This is why, you know, even um, uh, like our Maraja are asked, like, can I hold the hand of my wife when I walk? And he says, yes, as long as it's not creating an atmosphere of indecency, right? Yeah. So like, yes, I'm allowed to hold the hand of my wife. Islam right. is not so backwards that it says, don't hold the hand of your wife. Right. I, can, I can hug my wife. But if, for example, it's the, the response that it gets is that, wow, this is a little shocking, right? Yeah. Um, this is um, going too far. Um, then it wouldn't be permitted. The sad part is the world that we live in today, that's not too far anymore, right? I was, I was uh, going to mention that. Yeah. You know, as you very correctly said, you know, these intimate, the, the pictures of intimacy that we, we see them online nowadays, yeah. very comfortably being shared right. across all platforms, you know, and, and I'm, I'm so happy that, you know, you shed some light on that, right. um, you know, that'll help us better, I guess, guide ourselves on as we continue our lives whether on these platforms or not. Um, I want to take a moment here and, and I want to ask the audience this. Um, so from based on what you've, what you've heard up until this point, uh, what is your opinion on how we conduct ourselves on, on social media? Do you agree with what you've heard? Do you have a different opinion? Um, please comment, in, uh, share your thoughts in the, in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And, uh, and just as an incentive for you, the, I, have a, I have a really good giveaway uh, that I will announce a little bit later for those people who take the time to share their thoughts and give this video a nice little thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. But uh, please do share your thoughts with us. I'd love to hear from you and I want to see what you think, uh, what is your perspective on, on social media. I want to go back to what you, were, you asked a question. It was a good yes. question about whether it is someone's employment or someone's Correct. livelihood. line of work. Yeah, yes. line of work is on that. You know, I think that if that line of work is crossing that line of modesty, Bro, oh, right? That's an important yeah. point. If yeah. that line of work is crossing the line of indecency, and, and you have to be the judge of that. You know, right. I, it's, not, it's not the sheikh's responsibility to go out and, and, and gauge whether this is inappropriate. Correct. You know, I get questions like that all the time, like, sheikh, is this type of music allowed? Mm. And I'm like, I don't want to listen to it. Yeah, like yeah. you decide for yourself whether correct, it's allowed correct. or not. We yes. give the criteria, uh, you decide for yourself. And I think the same thing applies for social media, right? That if I'm doing something, what am I promoting? Am I promoting something which actually brings about a positive image of Islam? Correct. Am I promoting something which talks about the modesty that was preached by the Ahlul Bayt alayhim right. um, and, and if I can val validate myself and say, you know what, I'm, I'm correct. I haven't, I haven't violated any standards. Right. Then it's between you and God on the Day of Judgment. You yeah. should be comfortable enough for that. And if the answer is, you know what, like I am being a little shady, but you know, it's just a little shady, who cares, right? It's a little shady. Right. That's between you and God then, right? But if you're harming somebody else, and if somebody else is quote unquote misled because right. of that, you're as responsible as the person who was misguided by wow. your misleading. There's a wow. tradition, this tradition changed my life, you know? We talk about whether we should do lana, to whether we should do these things. There's a tradition that says that by Imam al-Sadiq that on the Day of Judgment, uh, a, a servant will be resurrected and they'll be given a cup of blood. And they, they will be told that this is the blood that you shed on earth. And the man says, I never killed anybody. I never did harm to anybody. Right, right. What is this blood? And the angel will tell them that you said something to someone. And that person said something to someone else. It repeated that story and the third person repeated it to somebody else and it angered that person and because of that he killed somebody. Right? Now uh, you are, because of that chain, you are part of that chain, right, you are as right. responsible. In my dealings with social media, right? if I'm doing something, if I dress a certain way, if I promote a certain type of lifestyle, if I uh, engage in something um, to be haram or because I know my friends like it, but whatever, and it's seen by somebody, Let's say my 12-year-old nephew sees it and he'll be like, oh, wow, yeah. a Muslim guy, look at his name is Hussein something. He's doing it. Ah, it must be okay or I can do it too. Correct. I'm as responsible in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a little bit of money for a lot of harm is not worth it. It's really not worth it. Now, you know, that right. applies to not only social media. It applies to business dealings. It applies to whatever I'm doing. A shortcut which will give me a gain if that was haram, 
it's not worth whatever gain that I can get, you know, because I violated a law with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. You know, like th these feedbacks and whatever people leave are fine. I'm not claiming to have all the answers. These are just my... Absolutely. Right? Yep. Like my yep. thoughts and opinions and I'm... Uh, be kind of interested to see what everybody has to say. No, and I'm, I'm sure they will, uh, they will get, get typing and, and share their opinions it with us. It goes back to my first point, right? Like there's going to be a lot of mujtahids out there who have their, their <laughs> opinions. Uh, yeah. But alhamdulillah, you know, alhamdulillah, they can share. But, uh, you know, there are certain Islamic principles which are not up for debate. They're not up for discussion. Correct. You know what yes. I mean? Yes, um, And it's important that we kind of swallow that and understand that. I was at a... I don't know if we have time, but I was no, at a... No, please, please, go on. We had a men's retreat. You should have come for that last weekend, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and, and a lot... I, I was so surprised that there was actually a good number of men, and these are men that I, that I have good relations with, I admire, right. who actually, you know, feel like Islam is restricting them. You know, this really? is one of the... Discuss they said, you know, like, Islam, for example, says don't shake hands, but it's like if I go into the business world, how can I not shake hands? Right. Islam says yeah. don't sit at a table where there's alcohol being served. How can I go out with clients that have this? Correct. And there's this notion that Islam is restrictive, that Islam hasn't progressed in any way, you know? Mm. Um, but we have to understand, right? Like, just because society takes us down a path, that doesn't make the path that society is taking me down right, right? Mm. Um, Islam has set a standard with which it will give us success in this life and in the next. If by fulfilling those standards, it makes my temporary material life difficult, then so be it. Right? Right, because it's right. offering me in return a tremendous gain of eternal Down life in yeah. paradise. Yeah. I think any business-minded person would tell you, okay, I won't take any, re I won't take any returns for two years if I can get a, a big return or a down the line. Down the line. Yeah, That's yeah. a smart business decision, right? Absolutely. And God is giving us these type of decisions um, that saying, look, I'm not, yeah, your, your life may be restrictive. Yeah, my social media movement may be restrictive. Yeah, my business dealings may be restrictive. But the long-term gain that is being offered by God just can't be passed up. You know, it can't be passed up. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, but now I have a very, a very tough question for you. Um, this is something that, I that you know, I, I <laughs> we're almost there. <laughs> um, this is something that I battle with as well. Yeah. You know, I, like a lot of the people watching today, yeah. uh, have these battles with, with myself all the time, you know, and how we conduct ourselves on social media. Um, now, when it comes to, if I can get a little specific, you yeah. know, when we look at um, applications like Instagram, uh, maybe Snapchat to a certain extent as well. There are certain parts of the Instagram experience or the Snapchat experience that expose us to things that we should not really be looking at to begin with. Um, to, to dig a little deeper, um, I'm referring to the, I think it's called the explore section on, on Instagram. Um, and over there, um, you know, we see a lot of different things, you know, um, and, and I'll be candid and, uh, and, and describe some of the things we see. You know, we've got Instagram models, uh, people who are not dressed appropriately. Um, you know, we've got sisters, Muslim sisters who are not observing the hijab. Uh, you know, so, you know, now all these things are on our screen and, and you know, sometimes we're human. You know, we, we tend to, you know, we'll enlarge that photo or... We would actually look at it. What would you say to this? That, you know, there's things on there that we shouldn't look at. How, is there a way, is there a formula that we can stay away from it? Or, or I mean, I, maybe just deleting the app altogether would help. But, um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of us may not end up doing that. But um, what do you think? You know, there's a lot yeah. of stuff that's on there that we shouldn't really be looking at. Yeah. Um, you know, if... In answering that, you know, parents really need to be aware of all of these things, right? Absolutely. Like, like Absolutely. my child may go on Instagram because I think she's sharing photos with her friends, but I, I don't know if they fully realize that there is this explore button which will bring <laughs> yes. them Correct. something that will um, really take them down a dangerous path. Now, I should, I, mean? I should add here that whatever shows up on the explore page largely is comprising of the people that we follow and the pictures that we've liked. Right. But there is a, a portion of it that Instagram may think we should know. And I right. think generally all of that content, which we maybe should not be looking at, would fall under that category. But that doesn't mean 
it won't show up on our screens. Right. So, right. yeah, so you continue. Um, you know, I just wanted to, to make yeah, that Yeah, no, no, I think you're right. Like, I mean, if, for example, person X has been exposed or the explorer section brings about uh, content which is inappropriate and it is based on their own likes and their own friends yes. as maybe two-thirds of the, the component. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, the person's kind of responsible for bringing about those type of images, isn't it? Like Because they've, right. they've either liked people who Correct. they shouldn't be liking, they've either followed people that they shouldn't be following. 100%. Um, yeah. So it brings about an importance of, of spring cleaning. So for example, like if I see things that I shouldn't be seeing, um, I, I need to unfriend those people. As, as inappropriate as, as that sounds, um, <laughs> yes. that's the Unfollow reality. Unfollow or whatever Unfollow, it is. Whatever yes. it is yes. right? like, I know that I, uh, I do that like with whatever number of friends that I have on Facebook. Correct. Not all of these guys are my friends. And eventually, if I see image after image which is affecting my soul, which it does, yeah? we, have to yeah. be, we have to be so cognizant that the, the effect that every single thing that we do has on our soul... Um, and uh, like the, the copy, the carbon copy that it makes on our soul, even if I'm scrolling, that one instant second of seeing something leaves a carbon image in my soul. And when I close my eyes, I can probably see that again because it's left that imprint, right? right. Um, I go in and I delete friends every, every so often. I just right. don't need this person. I don't need this person. I don't need this person. And I think a lot of it has to do because I recognize the weakness of my soul. My soul right. is tempted to look at these things. My soul is desirous to look at these things, yes. right? Because that's how God has created. God has created us desirous. But the problem is that when I satisfy my desires, my desires become my masters. And now he tells me, go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> right? And this is what yes. God means when he says, you know, Araita man ilahahu hawa. Have you seen the one who takes his desires as his Lord? So my desire is telling me, go on Facebook, go on Facebook, go on Instagram. And I'd be like, no, I'm going to see something inappropriate, but right. my desire wins and I go on Instagram Absolutely. or I go on um, Facebook. I think that we, ha we have to be um, realistic, right, and pragmatic. If I know that what I'm watching is inappropriate um, and it has an inappropriate effect on my soul, which it does, I don't think, you don't need anybody to tell you that it does, it Correct. does. Right. Um, I can't go on it. As right. simple as that, right? Like... <clears throat> I have to either delete things or I have to delete the entire app, right? Um, <laughs> get off it completely. Get off it because, yeah. because you know that it's there, right? Correct. You know it's there. You can, you can definitely think about if a guy is going there and his wife sees him, she's not going to be happy about that and vice versa. Absolutely. If the wife is, and it can cause a lot of marital tensions. I know I'm being naive or I'm being... Um, no, this is good information. I think, um, you know, like there's a, there's a concept in Islam called ifa, self-restraint. The way you fight off your desires is by practicing self-restraint, right? It's this entire discussion on ifa. Um, this is where the name afif comes from. When a person practices self-restraint, they're known as virtuous or chaste kind of because they, they're in control of their right. surroundings and right. environment. There are numerous ways to practice self-restraint. There is internal factors and external factors. Internal factors has to do with my own soul. Right. Knowing your own soul. So for example, if I know I have a problem with girls, I will not go to places where I know girls will be dressed inappropriate. Right. So I won't go to the mall. Because I should know that much about myself, right? Correct. Uh, if I know I have a problem with food, I will not go to places where there will be overconsumption of food. For right. I should know that much about myself. Internal knowledge. The next part is external control. And one of the main ways to control... Uh, or to have practice self-restraint is by controlling my environment, right? So I won't watch things which are inappropriate because I know it will have an effect on my soul. I can control that much, right? Right. I can it's control. In our hands, yes. I can control what I watch. I can control how much I watch. I can control anything, right? So, for example, if I want to go to the movies, um, I would check IMDb.com, for example. And I would check the parental guidance section, how much right. nudity this movie has, how much bad language this movie has. And if it has these components which I know are harmful for me, right. I won't go to that movie. Right? Absolutely. So you have to have that same level of practice when it comes to social media. If I know that being on there is affecting my soul, it's affecting my mind, it's addicted, it has addicted me to where now I'm spending hours on these right, things, right. 
I have to have that much strength to not go on there. And sometimes, you know what? Um, I need the help of people. I need the help of somebody to say that you have to help me. Right. Either keep my phone away, either do something for me. We have to start somewhere. We have right. to start somewhere. Absolutely. And I think this is where a husband and wife need to assist each other. Siblings need to assist each other. Believers need to assist each other. Um, but if this is an area which is uncontrollable because right. someone else is pulling the strings, then the least I can do is just avoid it altogether. Absolutely. Yeah. It's... It's not, <laughs> you know, I, I, I thank God I'm not on Instagram. I thank God I'm not on Snapchat because you know what? I'm having, yeah. I'm having difficulty and this is what I do, yeah? This, but this is not how I dress all the time, but this right. is what I do. Right. I'm having difficulty enough to control my soul when it comes to Facebook. And Facebook now is like past oh, dating, Facebook, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so if I'm having difficulty on Facebook, I can't imagine the difficulty my soul would have on Instagram. And right. based on that, I've made a decision not to go on there. If you've never tasted it, you'll never miss it. True, right? true. Um, so now that people have tasted it, they have to kind of ask themselves, what's more important, this connection or my connection to God? Yeah? Right, absolutely. Um, and, and I hope the answer is easy for them. Well, you know? no, I think, you know, the, everything that you've said, you know, it, it, it makes so much sense. And, and I think a lot of our viewers today will, will also, it resonates with them also. Um, and with me too. I'm, I'm active uh, on, on some, of these, some of these platforms. And, and uh, I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I, I, I thank you. Uh, this is good knowledge. This is, this is information that I think we should share more often. Um, because these are guidelines that we should live by, you know, mm. at, the, at the end of the day. And, and, and I hope that, um, you know, with this, we can enlighten ourselves uh, further. You know, and then and, and dig in a little bit deeper and see how we can navigate our lives on, on social media. Because let's face it, it's here to stay. Right. Social media is not going anywhere so, and it might even get get bigger. Right. right? So um, I hope you all uh, enjoyed uh, this episode um, and, and I hope you've you've been sharing your thoughts with us in, in the in the comment section. Um, do you want to hear more about social media? Please let us know. Um, please let us know if this is something that you would want uh, to see more, uh, more discussed in depth, and uh, inshallah, we will uh, we will make it happen. Um, I have a very exciting uh, giveaway, as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the uh, the conditions to to qualify for this are three things: you should give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and please share your thoughts on what we discussed uh, today. Uh, let us know what you thought about social media. What is your approach on? On social media, what are the precautions that you take or don't take when you um, uh, participate in this world of social media that we're in? So, coming to the giveaway, I have a total of eight Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge passes uh, to give away. I'm going to be giving out two on every episode that we air, at least for season one. And uh, I believe these are worth $50 each. So, this is a potentially $100 giveaway. So, please. Uh, do the three things as I requested, and one of you will uh, receive these two passes uh, from, uh, from us. And I, again, I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.